Many of us have the evidence of lived experience that alcohol makes you clever, charming and more attractive to the opposite sex. Unfortunately, there is the more powerful evidence of robust science which says that even small amounts of alcohol are pretty bad for you. But there is one drink which claims to be an exception. Red wine. We're endlessly bombarded with news reports telling us it might be just a little virtuous. It's a part of the Mediterranean diet, which is meant to make you live longer. We know that it's not the alcohol that's responsible for the supposed health benefits of red wine. But could there be something else in here that offsets the harm caused by the alcohol? Red wine is thought to be good for you because it's made using the grape skin, which contains a family of chemicals called polyphenols. These have been the source of intense study for decades, and one has been probed more than most. Resveratrol. Now, we've known about this chemical for a long time, but it wasn't until the 1990s that it was discovered in red wine. So why has it got scientists so excited? This is an East African killifish. Let's call him Arthur. Arthur is a handsome beast, but sadly, his time on this earth is short, just a few months. But that's useful for scientists who study longevity. So the scientists ran an experiment to see if giving resveratrol to fish like Arthur made them live longer. And what they found was that the fish in the experiment, given the resveratrol, lived up to 40% longer. Now that's pretty astonishing if you're an African killifish. What you'll find if you read beyond those headlines that say something like a glass of red wine a day keeps the doctor away is that at the bottom of the article it will say that the experiments were actually done on a fish like Arthur, a worm, a fruit fly or sometimes just cells in a dish. So although the research may be promising, it doesn't amount to evidence that red wine has health benefits that mean you or I will live any longer. And even if we do one day discover that resveratrol has significant beneficial effects on people, there's still a catch when it comes to getting it from wine. This is a glass of Pinot Noir. It happens to be from the Yarra Valley in Australia. Now, Pinot Noir is a light red with low acidity, medium tannins, and some of the highest levels of resveratrol of any wine in the world, at around 10 milligrams per litre. Unfortunately, though, most of the studies on resveratrol have been done using capsules like this. And in order to get as much resveratrol out of my wine as there is in this capsule, I would need to drink all of these bottles here. So I'd better get going. So despite many years of research, we're still not entirely sure what lies behind red wine's healthy reputation. And it may well be that we've been looking at it the wrong way. When drunk in moderation as part of the Mediterranean diet, red wine accompanies nutrient-rich foods like fruits, vegetables, fish and nuts. And the evidence suggests that it's the diet taken as a whole that leads to a longer, healthier life. Now, having one small glass of red wine with food is not going to do you any harm. But you have to ask yourself honestly, when was the last time you did that? If you're anything like me, you have one glass over dinner and then probably another glass over dinner and then you finish off the bottle in front of the television with dessert. So sadly, red wine is not some kind of delicious medicine where the more you drink, the better it is for you. I will just have one more. One more small one. 